Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of the Realm of Unknown. I'm your host Shane, and today we've got a rather biz- bizarre, is a weird one to give it. That was a weird opening too. But yeah, so first off, the audio might sound a little bit crisper, and that is due to me actually getting a legitimate microphone for probably the first time in a long time, um, and actually putting it to good use. So hopefully things sound a bit smoother, and hopefully that makes editing a lot easier on my end, not having to actually have to level everything out and keep it consistent, because that was annoying. Um, But yeah, so this is actually the first episode kicking off our, you know, spooky season. It's officially October at this point of the release. It should be the first weekend. And this month, we kind of got a few bizarre things to go over. I kind of want to have a mixed bag of certain spooks and frights and sort of scientific things as well. And to start with all that, we've got a rather bizarre topic. Uh, It actually involves two articles, one from recent time and another from a few years back, in which we discuss the topic of animals having some level of sentience to them, or at least self-awareness in, you know, the general scope of things. Which on its own is rather frightening, I would say. Uh, It's definitely not something you think about on a day-to-day basis, but it's simply something that is sort of bizarre when you actually put your mind to it. The idea that other creatures could have some level of know-how to us. Uh, Obviously not as high as humans, but in some regards they get pretty close. And these two articles talk about two such examples of that. And uh, so without a further ado, I'm probably not going to ha- linger too hard on this episode. It's not scripted or anything, unlike the rest that I kind of map out. But, you know, it's something interesting to think about, and I thought it'd be cool to talk about as the kicking off point on this new little era, I guess, of Realm of Unknown. Who knows? I, I have a lot of plans for development, but uh, this sort of starts starts that whole trend. So, without a further ado, let's get into the article which was posted earlier this month, or, yeah, earlier this month, in which it involves crows and the potential that they have self-awareness. So, this article was originally posted by the Smithsonian Magazine, and it goes as such. Researchers believe that crows may be one of the few non-human species to possess a form of self-awareness. Now, members of the Corbett family, which is involving ravens, crows, as well as jays, have long been known to possess the remarkable level of intelligence, which is capable of remembering human faces, solving puzzles, navigating complex environments, and even holding funerals for their dead. Now, according to a new study, these remarkable brain birds may actually possess a form of consciousness seen only in humans and a few other primates. In other words, they may be aware of their own sensory perceptions. Now, to determine this, researchers headed up to animal uh, animal psychologist Andreas Nader from the University of oh goodness, the University of Tübingen in Germany, and this is where they conducted experiments that involved monitoring the brain activity of crows while exposing them to various visual stimuli. The study required the bird to peck a colored light when they saw a figure on the screen, and of particular interest, this was when the bird's responses suggested that the presence of some form of secondary mental process began to arise, and that sort of aligns with the self-awareness idea. So this was evidenced by the way that the bird responded to figures that they were that were fainter on the screen. I, I'm losing my space here. And then Nader is quoted as saying, Nerve cells that represent visual input without suggestive components are expected to respond in the similar way uh, to a visual stimulus of constant intensity. I have no idea what any of this means, um, but he has continued as quoting, Our results, however, conclusively show that the nerve cells of higher processing levels in the crow's brains are influenced by suggestive experiments, or more precisely, product suggestive experiments. I have no idea how any of this actually deduces whether or not crows have a level of self-awareness, but from what I can sort of understand, for layman's terms, it seems as though they are consciously able to deduce that certain figures in the experiment 
are one way or another, and therefore they're able to adjust a- a- accordingly. I don't know if that actually leans into awareness. I do know that these things are extremely smart in a lot of ways, and uh, they're definitely not they're definitely not stupid. They're definitely not just an average bird. But I don't know if this actually fully determines if they have a level of self awareness or not. It seems scientists say they do. So whatever, I suppose. Um, it's definitely not as significant as I originally thought it would be. I actually did not read through this article in particular beforehand because this one actually came out on the 3rd. So it's pretty much the day I'm recording. So <laughs> this is new to me and it's not as significant as I actually thought it was. It's definitely interesting, I would say, that you know crows and ravens of sort are able to sort of consciously be aware of certain surroundings a bit more intuitively that we actually believed to begin with so that's something interesting um but another actually interesting article is the second one that we're going to be discussing which actually came out in 2016 back in march and this particular article i'm reading from the independent and this one involves chimpanzees which obviously are probably one of if not the like secondhand most uh smart or conscious creature on the planet aside from us humans because you know they're monkeys and they're very similar to us or primates whatever but this article is titled mysterious chimpanzee behavior could be quote sacred rituals and show that chimps believe in god now it's a bit wordy because it's they're just trying to entice you but it is interesting So, uh, the subtitle goes as the ritual has similarities to the building of shrines or karns, a human ritual that has been happening for thousands of years and across several civilizations. New footage shows that chimpanzees engaging in bizarre behavior, which might be a form of sacred ritual that could be shown as the beginning of some form of religious belief. Now, these particular chimpanzees were spotted in West Africa, and they were seen banging and throwing rocks against trees and throwing them into gaps in, uh, in between the trees, leading to piles of rocks. Now, these rocks do not appear to be any you know, functional use on their own, and it might be an example of an early version of ritual behavior, because these are rocks that would not benefit them. They're known to use some level of tools, However, these rocks would not be useful in that regard, but they're used for this mysteriously. So this discovery may help uh, researchers learn more about the basis of human religion and rituals and how such activities formed on their own during our history. The scientists described seeing the behavior through cameras that were set up to watch the chimpanzees. They saw them resembling, uh, or they saw them assembling piles of stones in a similar kind of ritual kerns as that found throughout human history, and that's just a stack of stones. If people aren't sure what that is, chimpanzees and other apes have long been known to use stones and other materials as sort of tools, including their own uh, sort of nutcrackers in order to get food out of hard shells. But the new discovery doesn't seem to have any, you know, functional purpose like we mentioned. It it doesn't seem to do anything for their survival. A researcher is quoted as saying, This represents the first recorded moment of repeated observations of individual chimpanzees exhibiting stone tool use for the purpose other than attracting or excavating forgeables at what appears to be a targeted tree. So what they're saying is uh, this is the first time they, they've seen them use materials such as this without the sort of moniker of a tool. The ritualized behavioral display and collection of artifacts of particular locations observed in chimpanzees collecting these stones and throwing may actually have implications for the influence uh, of some sort of drawn-out archaeological stone assembly, which some people are leaning more towards the idea that, you know, this might be the origin of how ritual stones came about, that the chimps are somehow putting some level of importance to these otherwise mundane stones without having, you know, any real purpose for that. So for humans, you know, we used stone buildings pretty much throughout history. We've had piles that symbolized a wide variety of things, 
which has been then used, you know, for burial purposes, for shrines, and other religious paraphernalia in a way. So these examples are often among the earliest examples of religion within human history. And now chimpanzees are, you know, they're having the exact same behavior in very similar instances. The chimpanzee's behavior has also represented a direct connection to human religious rituals. Indigenous West African people also collected stones for sacred trees, and similar behavior is seen elsewhere in pretty much a lot of cultures and religions across the globe, uh, in which people would do very similar practices, That I mean. So in a piece written around the findings, this being the video that was showing the chimps throwing the rocks and collecting them into a pile, Researcher Laura Cohen described the experiment of watching the ch- or the experience of watching the chimp look around and then fling a rock into the tree trunk. She's quoted as saying, "Nothing like this has been seen before, and it gives me goosebumps." The discovery could offer insight into the way of humanity's secret, uh, sacred rituals and how it began. She writes. Marking pathways and territories with signposts, such as a pile of rocks, is an important step in human history. Figuring out where chimps' territories are in relation to throwing rock sites could give us an insight as to whether or not this is the same case here. So it's interesting, I would say, uh, the idea that, you know, there's, there's another species on Earth. The crow thing was interesting, the idea of having some sort of awareness to them. Uh, I know some primate species, as they mentioned in the one article, does have that, such as, you know, gorillas, gibbons, chimps to some degree, like more of the the great apes, uh, more or less. And a lot of animals have very high levels of thinking and awareness to different levels of it's weird and it's complicated, but we've never had an example of animals doing something like this in this way. And this repeatedly, like this is in and of itself with like, if this was a human doing this, we would most likely just associate it as, oh, okay, that's like a weird thing that they do. It's a ritual. It's a practice. It's something that they do because they want to or have to. An animal doing that, we never really even think about, but here they are doing it. And whether or not it's even more widespread than just this, you know, colony of monkeys uh, or chimps i keep calling them monkeys um this colony of uh, of chimpanzees in west africa perhaps it's even more widespread than we actually know of perhaps we just aren't able to observe all these groups of chimps or groups of gorillas and other great apes doing similar practices across africa across the world who knows like it's very interesting to think about and it's very interesting to speculate upon and in some regards, it's kind of creepy. It, it's very strange, and it's very bizarre, and it's something that leans a little heavily into uh, Planet of the Apes territory, because we're getting to a, a level... Again, this was a few years back, so perhaps there's been some further research. I haven't been able to find anything in particular relating to this. Obviously, it was a very rare instance for them to capture this moment, so whether or not they continue to research that thing uh, occurring in other groups, we're not really aware of just yet. But it is interesting to think about, and again, I it's leaning very heavily into Planet of the Apes territory, and as interesting and as fun to think about as that might be, it's also very terrifying. It's something that you think of just solely through science fiction, but if you really think about it, evolution and us being here are kind of science fiction-y on their own. If like, It's just so bizarre to think about, and it's just so by circumstance uh, chance that we've gotten this far for us to, you know, sitting and, and recording about another animal species and then having dozens of people listen to it through audio wavelengths across the globe. Like, it's such a weird thing to actually think about. But we never really do. And the idea that other species might be slowly but surely creeping up on us in very similar ways is interesting. And like I said, I wanted to start off this Halloween, this October, this fall season 
whatever you want to call it, was something interesting, and I want to sort of spitball between different stuff. A lot of people are probably going to be doing a lot of haunted things, a lot of true crime stuff, and that's great, and I probably will do a lot of them this myself, but I like to stir away, and I like to do some more interesting things that are different. Maybe not as different as they could be, but they're different than what you might expect, and this was a good example of that because... I don't know anyone else really talking about this. Uh, again, that one article was new, but the other one that we just discussed with the chimpanzees is four years old, almost five. Uh, and I, I've never heard of it until very recent when it was mentioned to me. So I, I find that interesting. Who knows whether or not anything will come of it in the future, but I thought it'd be a great topic for today's episode. So self-aware animals aside, uh, expect a lot more stuff coming out in the near future for this podcast. I'm recording a few things here and there for October, like special wise, I should say. Uh, there's a bunch of new stuff going up onto the Patreon coming soon. I've got a few episodes being recorded for that as well. And, you know, I, I kind of want to get the ball rolling a bit more when it comes to this brand and this podcast and a lot of the things that I kept saying I'd be doing over the summer but I never found the time to and then stuff happened and then work happened and now I've got a very busy schedule and it's it's a work in progress we're almost two years in come December and uh, we should be a lot further than we probably are right now, but that's all on me. So uh, it's a work in progress. But I want to give that heads up because it's something that I, I really want to make this work, not just because it's something, you know, the awareness of it. I, I do this because I, I have a lot of fun and it's a good way to talk about stuff that I'm not normally able to talk about on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's fun and I, I want to enjoy it and I want to keep it going for as long as I can. So we'll see how long that goes on for, but I hope you guys enjoy this rambling that I always have at the end of episodes. I try to put it at the end of the episode rather than the beginning of the episode because I know people won't sit through it then. But otherwise, aside from that, uh, no really big news. Uh, I hope October continues to be a fun month for you guys. If you have any special topics or feedback or anything, be sure to check us out over on Twitter and Instagram. It's the same name as here, as well as our Gmail and pretty much everywhere. It's just Realm of Unknown, anywhere you want to look. Uh, so aside from that, have a great time, and I hope you guys remember to stay spooky.